Hey guys, welcome to part three of this little series that we're doing, working a watercolor painting into a slow stitch. I love painting, but I also love stitching. So I had this idea to see if we could merge the two uh, creative ideas. And I think we are doing that pretty successfully. I will link the um, first two videos in the description below. And um, you can see it from the first episode where we create the painting. And this is where we left off in the last, the last one. Um, I wasn't exactly sure where this was going, but I do think I know now. I'm still not quite ready to cut the top off, but I do think we are going to cut the top off um, and make it a flat panel piece. But my idea for going forward is... What if this was the view out of a window? Yeah. Um, I said in the first episode, I have this piece of zipper. So what if this was sort of like the window frame? Now, do I want to do this? That would cut off part of the painting? I don't think so. But what if I wanted to sort of frame this this way? Yeah, I think so. So we're going to work on that. And I'm going to talk you through the process. I'm not going to make you sit ad nauseum and, and listen to me talk through the whole thing, but I'm going to just cut pieces of this piece of zipper, which is from another project, which I don't remember what project exactly, but for some reason, I only needed the one half of the zipper teeth, and I saved this other piece. I don't know why. Yeah, so we're gonna make sort of a window frame with these pieces. Uh, I need a needle. Of course I need a needle, let's see. Make it kind of a long one. And we're going to lay this out. Yeah, so I think we're going to do something like that. So I'm going to use some gray embroidery floss. My reading glasses are important. And I'm going to use it, um, I'm not going to separate it, I'm going to use all six strands. This is DMC embroidery floss number 535. Oops. This is kind of a long needle, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take two of these pieces of zipper. I'm gonna cross the corners like that. Let's zoom in just a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna cross the corners like that. I'm gonna bring the needle up through the bottom in one corner. Oops, after I knot it. You know what? I'm going to leave that in where I made that mistake. <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to bring it up into one corner. And then I'm going to push it down into the opposite corner, kitty corner. Then I'm going to come up over here. And I'm going to go down over here and make a little X. Do a little, oops, cross stitch. Try not to get yourself all wrapped up in the thing like that. There we go. So we're gonna make a little cross stitch like that. Where are we? There we go. So let's do that again. Let's tie that off. Put a knot in the end of your thread. Grab another piece of zipper and cross the two corners. Come up through the back. Go down across in the opposite corner. Then come up over here. 
and go down in that opposite corner. Like that. And then you have the corner attached with this cute little cross stitch. So let me do the other two corners and I'll be right back. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is figure out exactly where this is gonna get attached, which I think is gonna be right about there. And pin it. I'll pin it down so it doesn't move around too much, hopefully. At this point, you are pinning through a lot of different layers of material. I know some slow stitch artists use um, different kinds of um, glues and basting glues and things to hold things down. I still prefer pins. So I like that. I do think I want to add some yo-yos, fabric yo-yos. Um, these are just circles of fabric that have been gathered around the outside edge and pulled tight in the center. There is a lot of YouTube video tutorials out there, I'm sure, on how to make a fabric yo-yo. I will link one of them in the description below. Um, I actually, fun fact, know how to make these, but I don't. Um, I actually, there's some seniors at a senior home in California that um, if you give them fabric, they'll make you yo-yos. And I did that a long time ago and got a whole bunch of yo-yos from them. I think I mentioned this in a video before already. Um, and so I'm still using those. So I think I wanna place them something like that. I do have some beads and I do have some burlap. I don't know if I'm gonna use a burlap. I do think we're gonna put beads, but let's get our frame stitched on. I also have a word here and let's get our yo-yos stitched on and then let's see where we go from there. For sewing on the frame and the yo-yos, I'm gonna use some more buttonhole twist, which means I need a different kind of needle, something shorter and a little bit thinner. So we are going to first sew on our frame. And we're gonna do this just with the simple running stitch that we did in uh, video two where we attached all these other pieces. I'm gonna just do a basic running stitch. I'm gonna use this gray buttonhole twist that's a similar color to the fabric in the um, zipper. It's not an exact shade, so it'll show, which I'm, I like, um, but it um, is similar enough that it's not gonna stick out too much. Now, I am gonna just use a running stitch, but because there's so many pieces of fabric and chip, the chipboard under the painting, I probably have to oops, do it this way. So I took, come up from the bottom, Go back down about a quarter inch away, in case you didn't see video two, but I do recommend you go watch it. Pull until it's taut, then come back up again from the bottom about a quarter inch away from where you ended that stitch and do that all the way around. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back.
Now you just saw me not only stitch this on, but pin the yo-yos on. So I'm going to use the same um, thread, am I? Yeah, I'm going to just use this buttonhole twist. I have some on here. So we're going to just use the same thread to sew these on. So I'm going to flip this little red one back and we'll work on the green one first. And I'm going to just come up through the back near the edge of the yo-yo and just pick a random spot. Then I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of the yo-yo edge and go back down through the bottom. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Just take little stitches. You can do big ones, it's up to you. Um, I like to just do little ones. I like them to be there, but not um, take away from the look of the yo-yo to enhance it, if you will. You also, of course, can sew this on with some more fancy sort of embroidery stitches if you want, or you can do embroidery stitches over the top. We're not going to do too much of that in this piece, um, especially for those of you who aren't used to doing any stitching or very much stitching. Um, but by all means, if you're going to follow along and do a piece like this, whether your center is a painting or something else, um, and you want to add embroidery stitches, by all means you can. I love to add pistol stitch and bullion stitch. Those are some of the easier ones. There's a lot of um, books out there that have different embroidery stitches. And there's also a couple of good web, uh, websites and YouTube channels. I will link what I can find in the description below. But of course, if you guys have a favorite, if you do a lot of embroidery, and you have a favorite YouTube channel or website for reference for doing different stitches, do share. Let's start a conversation. And if you want to share your work and that conversation here in the comments below um, or over in my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, it's linked in the video description. Uh, I do some kind of artwork or something pretty much daily, and I share it on social media. So if you want to find all my social media links, there's a link called Linktree with my name at the end in the video description. And if you click on that, you're going to find my Etsy store where I sell digital downloads of a lot of things um, that I use in my work, but also that where I've taken copies of my work. And then sometimes I use copies of the work to create other work. Like when I did the face um, slow stitch, which I'll put a picture here. That was based off of a painting that I did. So anyway, just go all the way around until you get back to the beginning. And then tie it off at the back. I always do two knots. You take out the pin and I'm going to do the next one here and this one here and then I'll be back. Okay, as I was sewing the yo-yos on, I'm thinking, nope, I don't know if I'm going to put beads on this one, but I do want to do a couple of kind of fancy embroidery stitches. So I'm going to do my best to walk you through what I'm doing, but I will also still link some, uh, at least one channel I know of, uh, in the video description for you all. Um, first I want to see, do I want to put some of this burlap on here? I actually don't think I do. I think I like the way this looks right now without adding any more fabric. I think what I want to do is I'm going to um, take some of this cream colored embroidery floss. Kind of a lot of it. Okay, 
Again, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna actually separate the six stranded floss into three and a half, three and three. I could do all six, but I don't think I wanna do that. So separate it into two pieces. And again, I will try to link some embroidery basics information down below for you all that don't know how to do that. Uh, you basically separate the threads at one end and really hold the other end taut with your, I just put it between my lips and then just pull and it comes right apart. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go up here to the top. I do think I'm gonna cut this off. Let's do that, let's actually do that first. Now we're gonna come right here. I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna go, I don't know, about a half an inch or so away. Put the needle in and I'm gonna take the take it and run it under the fabric and have it come, the tip of it come back out where I went in the first time so that it looks just like that. Then I'm gonna wrap my embroidery floss around the needle Pushing it down, not too tightly. Pushing it down until the amount of loops and threads I have on the needle is um, at least equal to the space in the fabric between one end of the needle and the other. Like something like that. Then I'm gonna hold these in my finger and I'm gonna pull the needle through all of those loops Pull it up straight out the front and then angle it towards you and pull it tightly. Manipulate those loops just a little bit. And then go back down in here. That's not a super neat one, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's called a bullion stitch, so I'm gonna do it again. I usually do them in threes, groups of three. Oops, so I wanna come up here. And then I'm gonna go in about where the top of that first one was and come back out again where I went up that first time. Then we'll wrap again. And how neat they turn out just depends on how um, neat you are about wrapping the needle and how well you hold the stitches down when you're pulling the threads through and all of that stuff. So pull. And then you get to this point and you just kind of do that and then go down one more so I'm going to do a few more of these and I'll be right back
Okay, so there are my two sets of embroidery stitches. I do think I wanna add the word now. Am I gonna be done? I don't know. <laughs> so I print these words. There's, I have a number of digital downloads in my Etsy shop that are words and or phrases. And I print these words on fabric using my printer. I iron a piece of um, thin muslin or cotton to a piece of freezer paper. And then you can run it through your printer and you can print uh, words on it. You can print artwork on it and instead of doing a painting you could um, print a piece of artwork and use that in the middle before I remove it from the paper like I'm doing now. I um, spray it with a couple coats of some sort of clear sealer uh, because I have an inkjet printer and the ink will run. It's not waterproof so um, that will help prevent some of that. So then I do think I want that right there. I think I'm gonna just use a leftover cream colored embroidery floss to stitch it down. So let's see how that goes. I think there's probably just enough here. I should probably switch to a smaller needle, but let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna, again, just, I'm just gonna um, do a couple of tacking, sort of tacking stitches. Again, nothing fancy. I might even just do one at either end of the word. Now, if I was doing this on something that was gonna be worn or washed, I would make sure that my fabric edges were sealed. I wouldn't use a word that was printed on my computer printer because that ink is probably gonna be gonna run. Um, I wouldn't, of course, put a watercolor painting on it, but all of that being said, you could do something, a fabric collage um, piece like this on a garment um, if you take washing it into account for what you're creating. How cute is that? I'm liking this piece more than I was thinking I was going to at one stage of the game. Um, I'm gonna take some of this um, sort of green tealy colored floss I'm gonna use all six strands. This is DMC number 992. And the cream one was DMC number 739, just FYI, for those who want to know. Uh, let's see. Just looking at the piece and trying to see. I'm gonna just come up here and come up through the back. Then take your thread in one hand. I'm right-handed, so I've got my needle in my right, my thread in my left. I'm pointing the tip of it away from the fabric and I'm gonna wrap the floss around three times and then I'm gonna poke it back into the fabric, holding it taut, not tight, but taut, and pulling the thread back through. And there you have a French knot. Again. Now, if you don't hold the thread, you're gonna still get a French knot, but it'll be sort of a messy knot. There. It's a completely different look and it is um, no less interesting. And sometimes just because I'm lazy, to be honest, but also just because I like the messy, sloppy, handmade look, I'll do a little bit of both. It just depends on the mood that I'm in. There we go. So I'm gonna put a few French knots and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of embroidery, not too much, and you could make this as embellished and embroidered as you choose to make it. It's all up to you and what you're feeling at the time about your piece. Now we're gonna take some beads. I've got some seed beads here. that happen to be in colors that work with this piece and 
uh, they were already out on the table. So I have some vintage pearls from an old necklace too. I don't know if we're gonna use those, but they're on the table. Now I need to thread my beading needle, which is a challenge on a good day because it's a very teeny tiny needle, um, but you need an appropriate needle to go through your seed beads. If you have too big a needle, it's not gonna fit. There we go, got it, yay. Okay. So you need, an, you need um, needle and thread that's intended for use as seed beads. That's what this is for. And the, the needle is literally like the width of a hair, as is the thread. I do use a double, I do double the thread and then I tie a knot. Okay, so I'm gonna, again, come up through the back. I think I'm gonna come up over here. Sometimes I'll put seed beads in the middle of the yo-yos. Do I wanna do that? I might wanna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here. Whoops, where are we? Here, not here, because if you come up straight in the center in this hole, you're gonna end up filling this hole full of beads before you even see anything on the top. So if you come up at the edge of the hole, and then grab, a f grab some beads on your needle. I'm just picking colors at random, three or four. And then I'm gonna go in the other side of the hole And push the needle out back near where we went in that first time and pull like that then do it again you can use one color you can use mixed color I'm using this mixed color blue and green selection of beads. One more time. This time I'm gonna go onto the other side like I did before, but I'm gonna go straight down and out the back so that we have that. Then we'll tie it off. The stitches I use in the beadwork part are no different than the sewing stitches or the embroidery stitches. The only difference is um, I'm grabbing beads before I'm making my stitch. Really, that's the only difference. So I'm gonna do the same to the other yo-yos and probably add a, be a few beads in a few more places and I'll be right back.
So you just saw me start this blue yo-yo a little differently. The fabric of this yo-yo is a little thicker than the other ones and it doesn't lend itself too much to coming up through the back too easily. So I went in through the side and you saw me just take the fatter needle and just shove that knot down into the center of that hole. And now that that's done, we can um, fill in the center of the yo-yo and sort I guess sort of make it look more like a flower. Um, like the other ones. But this one is going to be more challenging. And this needle, as I've said, is very thin. And um, I have to sort of be forceful but gentle with it at the same time um, so that I don't break the needle. I have broken these before. I have, I have backups, but... Um, it's not good to break it in the middle of a project. <laughs> so, and then I'm only, I think I'm going to do two on this one. And I'm, I'm going to pick a spot that I think the needle, yeah, yeah, that the needle will go through. Then we're going to do some more beading and I'll be, I take that back. I said we were going to do more beading, but I don't know if we're going to. I kind of like the way it looks at the moment without doing more. So I think that's a good stopping point. You can, of course, do these kind of running stitches like we did here. And in between each stitch, when you come up through the back, grab three or four beads and then go down. And then when you do that, then you'll have beads on every stitch. And that's an interesting way to do. Yep, I like the way that looks. So can we incorporate our love of painting and watercolor into our slow stitching? Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. This is just one. We will ex be exploring more of them in the weeks and months to come. If there's any specific content you would like to see, leave me a comment below. You can also send me an email or find me on social media and send me a message that way. Um, I would love to have you leave any questions, comments, or concerns down below. Um, as I've said already, um, all of my um, Etsy store links and social media stuff is all down in the description. Check it out and support the free content if you can here on YouTube and over in the Facebook art groups. Not just for me, but for all of your favorite creatives out there. Um, they almost all have a way to support them and I know they would all appreciate that you do that if you can. Uh, so check out their video descriptions and if you can't find a way to support them, ask because they probably have one and maybe they're just not advertising it. Uh, that's it for right now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.